Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be walking you step by step in how I create my Puerto Rican beans. Hope you love this recipe as much as my family and friends do. Stay tuned. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add about one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil in my little mini caldero here. Uh, my mini caldero is set over medium heat. And I'm gonna go ahead and let this get hot, but not too hot to the point where um, when I go to add my ingredients, the oil starts to splatter up at me because that's no fun. So after I let this get pretty hot, I'm gonna go ahead and add my uh, my diced salchichon. Um, this goes by Beef Summer Sausage, and I found mine at Aldi. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a little mix, and I'm gonna let it simmer for about a minute or so. And just an FYI, if you're not a fan of salchichon, that is totally okay. You can also use uh, cooking ham, which is very good. And all this is going to do is it's going to add a nice, rich flavor to the broth of your beans, okay? So after it has simmered, it is looking very nice. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the next round of my ingredients. Um, here I got some diced uh, red pimientos, a little bit of green bell pepper, some stuffed Spanish olives, and one ounce of sofrito. Um, I'm going to link in the description box below how I make and store my sofrito. But since my sofrito is frozen, I'm actually going to cover my caldero with a lid. If your sofrito is not frozen, do not cover your caldero and just let everything simmer for about a minute or so. All right, now that my sofrito is nice and thawed and smelling delicious, I'm gonna go ahead and add my seasonings. Here I got one packet of Goya Sazon with achote and one packet of Goya pork sazon. Just an FYI, you do not need to use the same exact brands that I'm using. You can go ahead and use any brand of sazon that you like. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up nicely. And after I mix it up, I'm going to add about a quarter cup of tomato sauce. All right, and uh, this next ingredient may seem a little new, may seem new or a little odd to some, but I'm gonna go ahead and add about half a teaspoon of white sugar to my beans. Um, no, this is not gonna make your beans taste sweet. It's really good. And then after that, I got a quarter teaspoon of ground culantro, which is coriander, a little bit of oregano, and then just a little sprinkle of black pepper. And then just going back to the sugar, what the sugar is going to do is going to help balance out all of the savory flavors in your beans. Again, it will not make your beans sweet. All right, next up are the beans. They are rinsed and washed. And here I just got some regular red beans, but you can actually use any kind of beans that you like. Um, I love white beans, pinto beans work really well. And then after I add my beans, I'm gonna add about two and a half cups of water, okay? I'm going to add enough water because I'm going to be adding some squash at the very end of my beans so I want to make sure that I'm adding enough water to cover all of my ingredients all right and then after I add my water um, I'm going to cover and I'm going to let it simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes on medium low All right, now that my beans have been simmering for about 20 minutes or so, they are looking and smelling great. The flavors are emerging nicely. And yeah, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my calabaza. Um, my favorite type of calabaza or squash is butternut squash, but acorn squash works really well too. Um, the reason why I like to add the squash at the very end of my cooking is because they tend to cook really fast. Um, and if you add them to the very beginning, they will turn to mush by the time your beans are done cooking. 
Um, if you do not want to use squash and you want to use potatoes, um, you're going to want to add those near the beginning of your cooking time, okay? Because those are going to take a, a bit longer. All right, so now I'm going to cover my pot and let it cook for about 10 more minutes. All right, and this is the end result. After about 10 more minutes, the squash is nice and tender and it has perfectly thickened up the broth. All right, and there you have it. They turned out so delicious, and I'll be enjoying them with a side of white rice, some sweet platanos, and some big chuletas. Thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to like and subscribe and to share this video. Until next time, bye.